What's he, what's I, he on? I honestly, I don't know him. That show must Maybe still I be on. Maybe that's a hole in my resume, I guess. Yeah. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, Bill Belichick's future, James Harden gets taunted, and Booger McFarland joins us for five good minutes. But we begin today with tonight's Thursday night game, Carolina at Chicago. And look, no one can defend this game. It's a matchup of a 2-7 and seven team, Chicago, and a 1-7 and seven team, Carolina. The only strand that ties them together is the fact that Chicago traded the overall number one pick earlier this year to Carolina, and the Bears now own Carolina's number one pick in the next draft, which could well be the overall number one. So, Wilbon, I ask you this as a Bears fan because mm-hmm. nobody else cares about this game. Mm-hmm. Don't you have a perverse interest in this game? No. You know how I can prove that to you right now? Because I know you don't believe me. How? Here's how I many don't. times I have missed an entire Bears game since satellite TV. So since direct TV, you can see here. And I'm not watching a minute. I'm not even going to take my laptop out to turn that junk on. No one who's not of those two teams could possibly be interested. I'm of that team forever for 60 plus years, and I will not watch. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't mind that you're on a flight. I understand that. Now, the larger it. question is, are you invested in this and the outcome? Because it could change the, the path of the Chicago. It could change the path of Chicago Bears yeah. for years to come. I mean, it it really could. Let's say, for example, that Carolina gets higher bad team. Let's say they get hot in the next few weeks. Uh, they could end up not even being in the top five in draft picks. There are so many bad teams out there, Mike, yeah. that if they won five or six games, they wouldn't be in the top five. And then that trade wouldn't look quite like a coup that it looks like now. I, I mean, I understand why you would schedule this game. I'll just be fairly brief. Because they thought they were going to put the number one overall pick Bryce Young on television for people to see. And against him would be Justin Fields, who the Bears decided to keep instead of using that pick on this particular fellow. That didn't work out because Justin Fields is hurt and we got Tyson Bajit from Shepard College. So, I mean, it doesn't work out. But I I, I, I won't defend the game. But I'm going to watch it because I, w- I actually want to see Bryce Young just You're gonna a little watch bit. I'll tell you what. I'll watch a little. I'll call little. you when I land in L.A. right around, I'll, I don't know, three, 2 a.m. Eastern time. I'll call fine. you. You yeah. fill me in. Call me. Fill me in. I will. Call yeah. me. You'll get my service at 2 in the morning. Thank you. <laughs> you got a service? It's 2023. What are you doing? What are you, Hugh Hefner? Oh. I got a service. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move to the swirl around Bill Belichick. The Patriots are two and seven. Lip readers, dopes, think team president Jonathan Kraft told his father, quote, we're not good enough, close quote, during last week's loss to the commanders, though the context is unknown. Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk told Rich Eisen of rumors that the commanders are interested in Belichick if the Patriots let him go. And Charles Yahoo of I'm sorry, Charles Robinson of Yahoo. Of Yahoo. That, that was totally innocent mistake. Writes today that <laughs> Belichick's underwhelming record without Tom Brady and the failures of his coaching tree mean the Patriot way has actually always been the Brady way. Tony, is all of that clear to you? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, of course, you, you, you can't look at the Patriots at this point and not think that Brady was more important to Belichick. And I'm not a lip reader, but I'm going to take this down a different path. I had Jason Lockenfora on my podcast today. And he covers the league, and he knows it as well as anybody. And we're his pals. And he said Belichick's not going to be in New England next year. Flat out, not going to be there. He doesn't believe that he's coaching for his job in this game in Germany on Sunday. He doesn't believe Robert Kraft, if they lose, is going to fire him on a plane ride back. But he says that Belichick or Belichick's people are looking around for another landing spot for next year. And one of the teams he mentioned to me, Mike, was the Chicago Bears. How does that strike you? Would you rather have Bill Belichick or Jim Harbaugh? I'm asking you. Tony, I, and I read that. I was going to say, I bet you every city is going to come up with this same nonsense, which is what I'm going to call it. Belichick is, what, 71? Not that he doesn't have a couple more good years in him. Greg Popovich, who is it, it, maybe 73, just signed an extension. So I'm not going to say the guy's as great as Popovich and Belichick, 
aren't going to have a home in a soft landing spot if they want one. No, I would take Harbaugh. Because I don't believe you can go in some place and turn it around in a day. So Bill Belichick's going to take a team that may pick twice back-to-back -back years, number one overall, and he's going to flip that, but he can't get the job done in New England where they got, I mean, he's got an infrastructure, he's got a history and a culture that's built. I'm not buying any yeah. of that. And I no, think you need, I, don't I think you've got to have a quarterback. Have well, you know, because there are teams no. that are going to come open. Washington is likely to come open. Ron Rivera is probably done there unless he gets in the playoffs. It's possible the Chargers could come open, and then you would get a very good quarterback. Atlanta might come open, but they don't have a quarterback. What if the Bills go right down the drain? Could that come open? I mean, you want Harbaugh? Fine. Well, we're moving on. Let's move to the NBA and present our great fallback smorgasbord question. Last night, the Sixers beat the Celtics. The Nuggets beat the Warriors. Victor Wembanyama shrunk in Madison Square Garden. Spurs got pounded by the Knicks from moment one. The Lakers got blowed out by the Rockets, 34 points. And the Clippers lost their second game with James Harden playing as the Nets crowd mocked Harden by chanting, Darryl That was Morey. funny. Very funny. Wilbon, which result was most interesting to you? Tony, I'm not even going to go with a write-in candidate because Minnesota, by the way, Anthony Edwards in Minnesota, they, they, they look good. They look viable. Uh -huh. All right, but we got weeks to go because they're whatever they are, 5-1 and one or 6-1 and one or something like that. Tony, I'm going to go to the Lakers-Houston because that result, look, the Lakers, you know, been bad on the road. Anthony Davis did not play. There's all this talk still about LeBron and his minutes. Tony, they got punched in the face. The Houston Rockets, and let me just say this, Houston appears to be better than I think we thought they'd be right now. Emi Udoka is there. You know, they've got a coach who was like coach of the year in the finals the last time he actually worked an NBA sideline. Tony, the Lakers looked, they were injured, first of all. They have four or five guys out, so they were shorthanded. I want to be fair to them and not get carried away at three and five. Right. But, Tony, right. the way Houston handled them and <clears throat> were up on them, you know, 27 points at one. I, was, I watched a chunk of that game and was a little bit surprised. So I'm going to go with the Lakers okay. getting beat in Houston last night. I am tempted to go with Victor Wembanyama not scoring a point until the third quarter, shooting four of 14 and looking too many sort of Too many threes. Shouldn't be shooting that many threes. But he's 19 years old. I'm going to yeah. give him a break. He's going to yeah. play in the Garden many more times. He's going to have great games in the yeah. Garden. The Spurs, by the way, give up more points than every team in the league except, except the, the Wizards. Wizards. The team... <laughs> the games that I'm going to choose both involve James Harden, okay? The first one is the game that he played in. And I love that chant, Daryl Morris. That was great. That was like funny. worthy Laugh of Duke loud. students. It was. This is their second game with Harden. They've lost them both. And, and Kawhi and Paul George haven't begun taking games off yet. So that could be a bit of a mess. The second game, though, is even more important to me. It's hard, another one of Harden's old teams, not the Nets, but the Sixers, they beat the Celtics. Yeah. Mike, could it really be this easy? Is getting rid of Jim Har uh, James Harden, I'm Jim Harden, <laughs> getting rid of James Harden going to have the same effect as the Raiders getting rid of Josh McDaniels? Ooh. The guy is a Hall of Ooh. Famer. Is Embiid better without him? Tyrese Maxey. Is Tyrese Maxey better than him? Is Nick Nurse a genius? I was surprised. By that game. And I'm surprised by the Sixers. I am. The Sixers Let's take game a break. was interesting. That was entertaining game. Coming time. up, 49ers defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes will move from the booth to the sidelines, and we're going to ask Booger McFarland whether he expects that to help. We'll also ask him about how Mike Tomlin is handling frustrated diva wide receiver George Pickens. Yeah, Tone, Tyrese Maxey's development without Harden is important. I'm not going to say it's the number one development in the league, but it's important. Are they? Pardon the interruption is presented. You played defense a long time. You were a star on defense. What does this say to you that he's making that physical move? Yeah, it seems to me, Tony, they're trying to figure out the communication. You know, they're not playing very well, number one. I think you and I and Mike have discussed that. Their sacks are down. Right now, they only have 18 sacks on the season. Last year, they finished with 44 and countless more pressures. And so I think this is a, a case where... They got rid of the, not got rid of, but D'Amico Ryans went to be the head coach of the Houston Texans and in bring Steve Wilkes. Well, guess what? Steve Wilkes didn't hire the staff under him. Steve Wilkes doesn't really know the players. 
and they're thinking everything is going to be the same. It's kind of like taking a great chef and putting him in the kitchen and cooking a chocolate cake. Well, you bring in another chef, guess what? He can make a chocolate cake, but it's going to taste just a little bit differently. It's still chocolate cake, and I think the people in San Francisco want their defense to be the same as it was last year, and it's not. And so this is a, a, a clear case of, of, to me, they're trying to fix the communication and hoping that that disconnect will go away and the defense will play better. Booker, we like this next question because it sort of allows a certain coach, Mike Tomlin, to put some things in perspective. He told reporters that they're focused on receiver George Pickens being frustrated on social media for not getting the ball enough was like focusing on reality TV and it's a pebble in my shoe. Booker, Tony and I love this. Do you think Mike Tomlin went too far by any chance? How do you like him dealing with a devil wide receiver in this manner? Mike Tomlin has earned the right to do whatever the hell Mike Tomlin wants to do. That's the way I feel about that. And that's number one. And, and, and I think Mike Tomlin learned from the Antonio Brown situation because toward the end of Antonio Brown's tenure in Pittsburgh, things kind of went awry. And I got to give Mike Tomlin a lot of credit. He's known as a player's coach, but he's tough. He's demanding. And maybe things got a little lax with Antonio Brown. He's not allowing any of that to happen with George Pickens. The team is always going to be about the team, and he is very demanding. There's a reason he's never had a losing season. And I think the Antonio Brown situation is enlightening him with George Pickens. I'm not going to go down that road of paying attention to a wide receiver on social media. <laughs> Show up, do your job. If you get three catches, if you get 13 catches, it doesn't matter. You're a pro and be a pro. One guy who's worth paying t attention to in that division, no less, is Lamar Jackson, who just said about practicing against the Ravens' defense, his own defense, I believe our defense has no weaknesses. Uh, another division opponent, the Cleveland Browns, would say their defense has no weaknesses, Booger. You think Lamar is ready to go up and handle that Cleveland defense? Yeah, I mean, both defenses are very good, Mike. They do it a little bit differently. When you look at Baltimore, they got a great young coordinator, Mike McDonald. They bring blitzes and pressures from a lot of different places. They got two uh, standout linebackers in Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith, Humphrey at the cornerback spot. And so they do it a little bit differently with kind of disguises and blitzes. When you get to Cleveland, they got a new defensive coordinator in Jim Swartz. And they got this guy on the end out there named Miles Garrett. He's about 6'5 and 270. He can leap small buildings and single bounds. I think we've all seen that. And so if Lamar is going to have any success against this defense, they're going to have to block that guy on the end. And it's going to be done a little bit differently. It's going to be done with a four-man rush, maybe, maybe some man-to-man -man coverage, maybe some blitzes. Both defenses are very good. But if I was Lamar, I'd tell my left tackle, Ronnie Stanley, hey, I'll take you out to dinner next week. Just don't let number 95 hit me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get you out of here on this, and we'll shift to college. We have three big college games that involve top 10 teams. Number two, Georgia, hosts number nine, Ole Miss. Number three, Michigan, is at number 10, Penn State. And number five, Washington, hosts number 18, Utah. Which of those three games do you think is most likely to produce an upset? Well, I, I don't think any of them, but if, if I'm going to go with the producer and make him feel good and go with the most likely, I would probably lean toward Ole Miss. Like, isn't Lane Kiffin good for one of these, like, every now and then, like, uh, upsetting Nick Saban, upsetting somebody? And we know that Lane is one of the best play callers in America. And if this game were in Oxford, I may pick Ole Miss. But this game is in Athens. He's got to go on the road. And I think Lane will be able to score some points. And anytime you can put points on the board offensively, that gives your team an opportunity to win the game. I think in the end, Georgia will be too much. I think Lane, though, will make this game, as they say, closer than the experts think in the fourth quarter in Athens. Can't wait to see Thank that you, Booker, as now, always. Booker. Thanks, Thanks so you. much. Anytime, guys. Let's take one last break. Still to come, the Phillies may have just said goodbye to Reese Hoskins. And the Heat will have to cope without Tyler Hero for a little bit of time once again. Yeah, yeah Penn State's games, not these... winning. Penn State's not. Eh, eh. We've seen enough of Penn State to know they're not that good. They're not beating Michigan. Tonight on SportsCenter at 6 Eastern, the latest developments as Michigan awaits possible punishment. And Happy 53rd birthday, Bill Guerin. Guerin played right wing for eight different NHL teams between 1991 and 2010. The Devils, the Oilers, the Stars, the Penguins, the Bruins, the Sharks, the Islanders, and the Blues. 
He was on Stanley Cup teams in New Jersey and Pittsburgh. Guerin made four All-Star games, and he had 856 points. I mean, he was really good for a long time. Did you have him being, like, almost in elite company like that? I don't think I realized that. Yeah, well, that's why we do happies, to teach you. Happy anniversary, Julius Irving and Larry Bird. I know this. On this day 39 years ago, the two NBA All-Timers got into a fist fight during a game. The backstory is that young Bird was in the process of outscoring Dr. J 42 to 6. And on one trip down the court, Bird actually said out loud to Julius, 42 to 6, Doc, 42 to 6. And Julius's reply was a right hand to Bird's head. Look at the film of this and count all the Hall of Famers in that scuffle. Bird, Dr. J, Casey Jones, Moses Malone, Kevin McHale, Dennis Johnson, Mo Cheeks, Charles Barkley. I love Larry Bird, but I have to stand up for Long Island's own Julius Irving on this. You can't say 42 to 6. You can think it. You can't say it. Plus, my man Cedric Maxwell was out there, looked like ML Carr. Look, Tony, Bird said everything. One of the great things, and you know this, is to talk to players of that generation, even guys who once hated him and he hated, like his best friend Irvin Johnson, to talk to them about Bird's trash talk. No one in the history of the league, not the modern history anyway, talked the kind of trash Bird did, even to, even to Doc, our hero. Happy trails, Tyler Hero. The Miami Heat's leading scorer this season is injured once again. Hero rolled his ankle coming down off a floater in the first quarter last night versus Memphis, did not return to the game. After landing on Jaron Jackson Jr.'s foot, Hero said Ugh. he expects to miss a couple of weeks. Ugh. Looks like he's right. Reports today suggest he'll be in a walking boot for 10 days with a grade two high ankle sprain. Last year, Hero broke his right hand in Miami's first playoff game, and the Heat made the NBA Finals without him. Miami's starting backcourt for those playoffs, Max Struess and Gabe Vincent are now with other teams, and the Heat failed to acquire Damian Lillard in the offseason, despite Lillard's stated desire to go there to Miami. Yeah, you wonder if Miami's got to look around for some more firepower. I mean, who might be available if Hero's out more? If he's out a two to three, okay, you can, you can hold on. The East is not so overpowering. But any longer than that gets to be dicey. He gets hurt a lot, though, Mike. I, I think the bit, most yeah. amount of games he has played in any given year is something like 65 or 67. He, he's injury prone. Let's go to the big finish. Let's do it. Baseball canceled the general manager meetings one day early due to a stomach virus. Your thoughts about that? Well, they got the bigger winter meetings coming up, and you hope nobody gets sick at that. The Phillies will make Bryce Harper their full-time first baseman. That makes sense to you? Yeah, I mean, they don't want him in the outfield anymore. Uh, they want him in first base. He's good at first base. But Reese Hoskins is now available, and he is a really good player. And somebody's going to trade for him. He's really good. He's not Harper. He's really good. Andre Iguodala will be the acting head of the Players Association. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. And now that Iguodala's not playing anymore, he's got time. Very smart, aware, savvy guy. I think this is a good move. Caitlin Clark at number three, Iowa versus number eight, Virginia Tech tonight. Who you got? I got Iowa. But isn't Iguodala running a venture capital firm? Last okay. one, college football. Unranked Virginia at number 11, Louisville tonight. Are you smelling upset? You can put that on hold for a while. Maybe Virginia beat North Carolina a couple of weeks ago. I know it's been a disappointing season. Yeah, yeah, upset in Louisville. How about that? How about that? Yeah, we'll try and give Go you that home. action when you're on your plane to L.A. and not watching the other game. We're out of time. Try and do better the next time. I'm Tony Kornheiser. And I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, Knuckleheads. You can get the PTI podcast on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. And now, but you're rooting for the Bears tonight, aren't you? You're rooting I'm for the Bears. You want the number them. one. I just ain't watching it.